So, hey and welcome. This is the recording of the study guide for the summer course Applied IoT at Linnaeus University. So I'm going to guide you through how this course is uh, going to be held. You will find the study guide uh, at our learning platform, which is the start page that you're seeing here now. If you click on the study guide, you will end up at the study guide. So I'll start with the expectations and the expectations goes both ways. So uh, a little bit of what uh, we expect uh, from you as students and also a little bit of what you can expect from us as uh, teachers and teaching assistants. So. I would like you all to read this study guide carefully uh, and if there is anything that is unclear, if there are any questions, let us know. Give us feedback directly on this and we will adapt accordingly. But that means that you need to read it and you need to reflect upon it. Also good to mention is that you should be planning your studies. There are a lot of uh, sessions that uh, you will need to put in your calendar. And if you don't manage to look at these sessions live, uh, and I might say that the sessions that are going to be streamed on YouTube, they will also be recorded automatically and the same link, of course. So there is not uh, obligatory to watch these live, uh, but then Try to plan so that you can see them later on. The thing that you need to plan are the workshops. So those are not going to be recorded and it wouldn't make sense at all to record them because then you're uh, an active participant, uh, which means that you are actually working in the workshops. And I would say that the workshops are the most important part in this course. The next point, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. And it says, really, you are always encouraged to ask questions rather twice than none. And I do want to emphasize this, emphasize this. And uh, this means that we will need you to ask even if there is something that has been asked before, ask again. As we are using Discord, it is actually a little bit of hard to follow all the discussions. It quickly becomes a wall of text and there is a lot of messages. We will do our best to keep things tidy, but this is also just saying that rather ask a question instead of actually <laughs> trying to find the right answer. If you don't know the answer, just ask a question. Uh, and the thing is that it doesn't need to be a question that is uh, a teacher that, uh, or a TA uh, has an answer to, but please be prepared to answer all other questions. If you know the answer, please answer it and please ask questions. So this is a very good way of keeping a high level of interaction in the course. And uh, yeah, answer questions, answer questions and answer questions. Uh, it goes uh, both ways. Uh, we want you to be active. Uh, it's always more fun if you're active. So if there is someone that asked about what is happening tomorrow, I don't know. Should I watch this session or could I do I need to join in for the workshop or I'm am I missing something or what did they say and and all those things and you know the answer well well be quick and answer because it doesn't need uh, us to be answering we are many students in this course we are many teachers and many tas so this is a quite massive course in number of people that means it will be almost impossible to all direct all the answers to a single or a couple of persons. So you will all need to be active. Hopefully the information that we provide is clear enough. So there will not be 
too many unnecessary questions. But even if it is, well, please ask them. And so interact with everyone at Discord. So, well, it feels like I'm saying this many times, but it needs to be said. Well, be engaged in the course. Just say hi, and there are a lot of different channels in the Discord server, so you could use uh, the random channel if you just want to chat, but try to do it. One thing that uh, we are very clear about is to be nice and respectful. The, the success of this course and your learning experience and everyone's uh, learning experience is uh, based upon your participation, uh, participation. And in order to get this really good feeling in the course, be nice, be respectful. There are students that have no prior experience in electronics, in programming. Uh, and I know there are many that do have a lot of experience. So please respect that and answer all questions which you might be able to answer. And I know that many of you are experts in certain areas. You might have a good expertise in some area. Please say, please share. Uh, that makes this course a good course. And I would say the most important thing of all is to try to adopt a positive attitude and have fun. If you don't think this is fun, uh, well, you're in the wrong place because this is fun. Uh, we are going to have fun and you will experience that playing with IoT and developing something, doing something, creating something, it is a journey that is so fun. So feel that. You should bring that in and have fun. Uh, so have a positive attitude and have fun. Uh, there are always a way forward. So even if you struggle with something, you will solve it for sure. Ask questions and try to be in, and try to interact with others and try to see the solution and not the problem. Okay, so that was a little bit about the expectations uh, on you and you can also expect the same thing from us. The objectives. So let's go to the formalities. So the aim of the course is for you to build a connected sensor unit, and that is the thing, the IoT device, uh, that provides some kind of measured value that is presented over the internet. Uh, so there are some gray areas on what you, you can do or what you cannot do, but uh, if there are a gray area and you need to know if this is within the boundaries of the course. Well, you know the answer. Ask the question and do it in the Discord server. And uh, we are aiming also, so specifically of battery efficient IoT devices, uh, which you might have um, already, um, which you might already know is that we have this recommended list of hardware and you won't see a Raspberry Pi on that one, even though it might be considered as an IT device as well, as there is a large gray scale in this world. But we are aiming for the battery efficient IoT devices and also using uh, a couple of the IoT protocols that's out there. I also want to mention that this course is an introductory course. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can do, uh, you can go and do as much advanced project as you like, uh, but keep in mind that it is an introductory course. Uh, so we will try to at least keep the base level, like the introduction, uh, so everyone uh, keeps uh, their path on uh, on being able to do their project. But please don't let that stop you. Uh, I know that there have been many people during the last two years when we've had this course that has pursued projects what was really 
a high level above what is like from the uh, for the basic requirement and please take that opportunity because we do have a lot of material that covers even advanced stuff in this course and the course has a practical focus and examination uh, that means that we will emphasize that it that you are going to create something, you are going to build something. Uh, so the list that you already have seen, the bill of material, uh, which is also linked in the in the course homepage, uh, needs to be bought before the course starts. Uh, if there are any questions about what I can use instead. If you have an idea that you want to use any other kind of hardware, please bring that up and it will most likely not be a problem, but it needs to be communicating with the internet of some kind. We will use the Canvas learning platform for submission and administration of the exams. Uh, Otherwise, the majority of all the communication, lectures and interaction will take place in the Discord server. Uh, you will be automatically connected to the Canvas site, which you see in the back of me, uh, when you get your LNU student account. And this web page is also open even though you are not logged in, so you actually will only you be um, you only need to log in to canvas when you're doing the quizzes and also the submission otherwise all information is out there in the open and that's by design so let's go to the communication strategy this is an important part as i previously said we are many people on board in this course so we need to talk about how we communicate. Only ask personal questions regarding your formal participation in the course, absence and grades of that material of questions regarding those things that you wouldn't like to put in a public server. Then send me an email and I'll answer. But please, I'm saying this, please help to maintain the emails to a minimum. That doesn't mean that you're not allowed to send me an email, but please don't. So if there is anything that is like of formal participation or personal questions, you might ask me, but I would rather not see emails dropping in on questions on hardware or particular questions about your assignment, etc, etc. We will not accept any friend requests at discords. This might sound a bit rude, but it is also per design. Uh, we want to minimize the amount of direct messages, DMs. Uh, because we want to push in all the questions and th discussions into the public channels. That is, all questions are valuable. Whatever questions you have, there might be a couple of other people wondering the same thing. Or if there is someone else that knows, knows the answer to this, they will also learn by answering that. So please keep every all questions in the Discord and in the public public channels. So please try to avoid all direct messaging, private messaging regarding what, what, uh, anything that happens in the course. Questions about course assignments, examination schedule are asked at Discord. So just to emphasize what I recently said. Information regarding the course will be posted in the course announcement channel in the Discord server. And it is important that you read everything that is pinned and you are able to use this. Uh, you can actually filter posts that are pinned in the server. So they are, it is a little bit easier in that way to 
skim through whatever important information that you're supposed to follow. I do want you all to respond to all pinned posts on Discord. And what I mean by responding is that you give a thumbs up or whatever emoji you'd like, but please respond. And why do I want you to respond? It is because it's a good measurement of that I and the other teachers and TAs can see that the information has been received. So it is sort of an uh, acknowledgement that the information has been acknowledged by you. So please keep that in mind that use the like button or well, thumbs up or a happy smiling face or whatever symbol you like for every post, uh, at least for the course announcement, because it's a good indication and it keeps a little bit less uh, uh, wondering if how many have read it or not out of the discussion. If you want to filter the posts, you are able to do that by pressing the little pinned uh, filter on pin post, the little pinned messages button up there. Uh, if you are responding to post, you either uh, press that little happy button and, uh, and choose a symbol or press one of the symbols that already someone else has pressed. So it's very simple and please try to do that as much as possible. Um, all course lectures and material will be in English. Uh, that means that we also keep all the discussions in English, even though you might be speaking you're, even though you might be speaking to another person in that speaks your native language. So if, if a couple of people are from Sweden, uh, it's easy to line over, uh, lean over and, uh, and, and start uh, a, a discussion in Swedish. But please try to avoid that uh, because we do want to feel uh, that everyone feels included. And if we start speaking in, in several languages, uh, we will automatically exclude a lot of people. And also the course is in English, so we'll try to keep it at, 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 the, at that language. The same applies to the workshops when you're in voice uh, mode, uh, with the exception that if there is a small group of people and you all speak Swedish, well, of course, <laughs> switch language and speak Swedish. Uh, it's uh, obviously the most pragmatic way, but just make sure that you're ready to switch to English if there is anyone that doesn't speak uh, Swedish. We want everyone to feel included. And I also want to say that uh, not all TAs speak Swedish. Uh, we have uh, Italians uh, in, um, on board as well. And, uh, and all the teachers are not Swedish speakers either. Um, so please keep everything to English as uh, far at the, as it is possible. Okay. Let's go to the objectives of the course. And we have created a small table with the objectives of the course. So in order for you to get your grade in the course, these objectives are important. So if we look at the syllabus, there are a couple of objectives. So you should have a fundamental knowledge about the Internet of Things. That is one objective in the course syllabus. That uh, objective is linked to the task Q1, which is the first quiz. That's the quiz one. Uh, you will also need to know a little bit about the basic programming for microcontrollers. That will be handled in the quiz number two. Also have a basic understanding of sensors and data gathering, uh, Q3 and T1, and then T is your report uh, and there are T1 and T2, but I'll come to that later. And then have a basic knowledge about IoT infrastructure and message protocols, quiz number three. And know about data visualization and database, Q3 and T2. So that's quiz three and T2. 
and have a hands-on experience of developing an IT project. Yeah, P1. Uh, yeah, we'll go down to those later, but that's P1 and T1. And have basic knowledge of 3D printing. Well, we do have a quiz for that as well. And there will be some material later on. So those are the, the objectives from the course syllabus. So let's skip down to see what this means. Q are quizzes at Canvas, and there will be four quizzes at Canvas. They will be handed out according to the schedule. I'll skip to that part a little bit later on. The T1 and T2 is the basic and extended tutorial. So there are two versions of that. These are like either you do T1 or you do T2. That is about it. And then the P1, that's the oral presentation. So not everyone, you are not required in, in, in that case to do an oral presentation, but you need to do one if you want to have a higher grade. And we'll come to that later on. And the deadlines, yeah. In general, we start the course on Monday the 6th of June, which happens to be a holiday, so we'll start on the 7th. And we'll end this course on the 10th of July. Um, you ne will need to do all tasks before the course ends. So that's the final deadline if you want your grade. Uh, and you will, after, you will also need to do a peer review, uh, which are, is actually an obligatory part of the course. So let's skip down to the examination. The examination. And this course is graded into an A to F scale. Uh, and in order to get a grade A, you can see from the table here is that you need to do T1 and T2. That doesn't mean that there are two reports that needs to be done, but well, you will need to fulfill all the requirements in the T1. This will be very clear when we look at the um, report template. But you will also need to fulfill 100% of the T2 requirements. So the, like uh, there is a grading system for, for the uh, template. You will also need to put out a public report. That means that you will need to have a public website when your report is to be seen. You will need to do all the quizzes and the quizzes aren't actually graded, you will just need to finish them. And there is also this complexity level, uh, which is a little bit complex to just go through now, but the thing is that regarding your complexity of the project, that uh, if you do a simpler or a more advanced project, that obviously uh, reflects on the grade as well. And a presentation demo video. And you will also need to do the peer review. And most importantly, like in this uh, course, is that this course requires an active participation. And you will need to have a very high active participation in order to get an A grade. So, and what do we need with active participation? Well, obviously you need to do everything in order, like you need to do the quizzes and, and, and such. That is one form of, a, of a participation. But you will also need to show that you're active and discussing and answering questions and being that kind of student that helps others to achieve better results. That's a good way of getting an A grade. So if you want to aim for the higher grade, be active in Discord, help other people out, ask questions, answer questions, be there. Yes, and we do measure the participation. So there is a bot in the Discord server that gives some overall statistics. Uh, we won't dive into the very itty bitty details of everything, but uh, if we are on the verge of uh, giving out an A grade or a B grade, these things will matter a little bit. So if you go for the B grade, it's essentially the same that you will still need a high active participation. So you can't be silent all the way along and get an AB grade. Um, 
And you, for the C part, uh, grade, uh, you will still need to do a public report and you do quizzes uh, and like a moderate, active, uh, moderate participation. And then it goes down to D and E, depending a little bit on if you do want to do a public report or not. And as you see, uh, grade A and B, that's when you have the presentation or demo video. So in order to get a, B, you also need to do a, a presentation of your project. Uh, that is not required if you go down uh, to C grade or below. One thing that needs to be mentioned here is that if you aim for a grade higher than C, you will need to present and discuss your project with a teaching assistant no later than three weeks after the course starts. And why this is important is that we, for once, need to plan all the presentations in beforehand, uh, which will happen in the end of the course. So that is one thing. But we also want to be able to help you to align your project as good as possible, so it aligns with the uh, with the grade that you that you want. So please bring this up and the, the way to do this is that you do it during the workshop sessions. Uh, so there will be time to discuss your project ideas and then you discuss it with a TA or a teacher during any of these sessions. If you don't do this, we won't guarantee a higher grade, uh, but we'll try to do our best. In order to get a higher grade, you need to do an individual report. And I'm just saying that, that um, there is a possibility to do the project uh, together with uh, one other person. Uh, I would say that I wouldn't recommend it. It is a distance course and you're all working with your own hardware. So I would say that 98% of all students in the previous years have done individual reports. Uh, but with some exceptions, but you are allowed to do it. If you want to do it, uh, you are a little bit opting out under high grade standard, uh, but you can of course do it. Please bring that also up for a discussion if, you're un if this is unclear. We, you will also, if you go for the higher grade, have the opportunity to be showcased on the good examples. And if you want to look at what has been done before you can actually go in and take a lot of inspiration from the previous years uh, and you will end up here if you want as well so in order to get the c grade you will need to do all the tasks before the deadlines according also to this table so that's about it. If you do whatever, like everything that is required of you, you fulfill the basic requirements and you do everything before the respective deadlines, you'll end up with a C. If you want to go higher, you need to discuss that with someone and align and you need to do a presentation and a little bit higher complexity level uh, and also a higher level of participation and then you'll end up in the AB. If you don't do these things you will end up in the lower scale uh, of, um, of grades. Okay so the planning. All the planning is found on the course web page. Uh, so if you just dive into the public page of Canvas you will see uh, there is a planning page and also we are using the, um, the schedule in Canvas. So you are able to um, subscribe to this schedule and import it into whatever calendar application you do have in your phone or on your computer and you will find um, you will find what you need uh, in this uh, web page. And the first week is more of an introductory week. So 
just to mention is that the first week of the course that will cover the basics of getting started. Uh, a lot of focus will be on getting started with hardware, getting you acquainted with the IDEs and, and uh, uh, the tools that we're going to use and, uh, and such. Uh, we have planned the majority or of the lectures for um, the evenings between Monday and Thursday. Uh, the exceptions are the week weekly video blogs, which will be held at Fridays. Uh, but the schedule is a subject that might change. So these changes will be distributed in the Discord server. And even though you are not able to watch the lectures live, you are able to watch them later on. But I would like that as many as possible actually join in live because we will open for questions during the lectures. Uh, and that is uh, a much added benefit for both you and and us. All the workshops will be held at our Discord server. So the workshops will happen there. Uh, what you need to do uh, in beforehand is to try out the technology. So please log into the Discord, join into a voice or a video channel, see if your camera is working, um, check out how you whatever you want to do works uh, because discord if you haven't used it before it can be a little bit of an intimidating tool because it's black and it's a little bit yeah gamey gaming style uh, tool but it's a tool that we have now uh, iterated uh, forward to we have used a couple of other tools during the way and discord is really the best the best tool for the job when we have these large groups and you being able to pick your your place in a lot of different sessions so you can jump your jump around as you like and share screen video and interact. If we look at the tutorial template, uh, which is um, um, the one that you're going to um, use as the um, base for your tutorial, uh, I'm just going to show this very, very quick. Uh, that there is a template and there are a lot of instructions here uh, with different uh, checkboxes that uh, gives you all the basics that you need to fill in and do your report. Uh, there will be a separate video uh, that goes into more detail about how the actual IoT tutorial will be will be done and handed in. Uh, so I'll be very brief about this now. But we are going to recommend that you use HackMD as the main um, the main tool because you it's a really good tool for writing uh, this kind of reports. You do it in Markdown uh, and you can very easily uh, copy the template. Uh, you are also able to do this if you want uh, to publish your report in a, a GitHub repository and then later on share that link instead. And if you do have any idea of another way, well, happy to bring it up for discussions, but uh, the, the recommended way is HackMD. So that was the study guide. Uh, if there are any, is, if there is anything that is unclear, uh, I do like uh, that you give uh, us feedback on this right away and we'll do our best to make it more clear. So thank you for listening in and uh, once again, Welcome to the summer course in Applied IT 2022.